Yeah. I hope it I see Josh. I say I got you. After we can. Oh Lordy. Did he know if I got a move? We want to welcome everybody here tonight at Heaven's Gate Church, the revival that we're having. We're just going to praise and worship God here tonight and our music. I just want everybody to just get in there and worship with us. If you know the song, sing it with us. Well, what a mighty God we serve.
Brenda said to continue praying for her. She's still not doing good at all since David passed away. And she also just texted me and said Woodrow's brother was in the hospital. He had poison. He had got poison from the hospital. Oh, yeah. Okay. I got from in court trial. He said, sure, he's in bad, but it's now good. Tabby's head somewhere to get some radiation and nerve vision and nerve work on. Just keep you in there. Right. <coughs> Brenda, you said called me this morning and said pray for her daughter, uh, which I've called some of you today. Uh, they were going to transport her up to the Baptist Hospital, but they said in two weeks she probably couldn't make it. Uh, and uh, she's got COVID and her got double pneumonia. They washed her lungs out yesterday and she's not getting along good at all. She needs to touch from God. She's going to live. So let's pray that God touch her. She's 64 years old, and as far as I know, she ain't been in church in years, so she needs to God. Is pray for, continue to pray for my wife. She was suffering from an accident. Oh, man. Yeah, they told me today over I remember Ernie, they said uh, just to keep her fingers crossed that he goes back to the orthopedic the 19th and if he could put weight on his right leg, they let him come home. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Yes. I have a prior for myself. I've got some pretty serious health problems going on. And I also pray for my children and just bring us together as a close family and bless us. Amen. Amen. You pray for Praise God, Mama's back tonight. Amen. 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 I'd like to just uh, thank God for the healings and the things that he's done in my life. And went to the doctor today, got a good report. I was worried about that dog bite. And he said, he said I'd live to fight again another day. So, hey, I just give God <laughs> You know, that just praise God for the service we had last night. Amen. And yes. And people being obeying God. Amen. And, and it was just a mighty service. Amen. Yeah, it was. It really was. Just felt the Holy Ghost all night. Yeah. <laughs> Does anybody want to be anointed? Brother, I've got a special request. I like church heaven and pray about it. God knows all that. Amen. Everybody stand. Pastor, lead us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you tonight, Lord, just honor you and praise you, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you move in our midst tonight in a special way, God. We ask for the anointing upon each and every person that's come tonight, God. We also, Lord, ask that you anoint us a preacher tonight, God. And let you Lord, speak the spirit of the word, God, like you have spoken of God. I say peace to the person ever heart that's here tonight, God, through your word, Lord.
being a part of God's plan, what it means to us in life, and the test us that come out tonight and bless out of the service, and what we're doing in the service tonight, we must be joined to have it in our heart and soul each and every day, and let God have his way. And bless the service tonight, and it grows strong in the Word. It's so good to have a revival here, uh, up, up next to the love of Jesus Christ, and let him be part of us each and every day of our lives. Let him in, in our heart and soul, and give us that joy, Amen. peace and joy. For the love of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Okay, we will have a Bible tomorrow night, starting at 7, and Saturday night, starting Woo! at 7. Yeah. Don't forget our fifth Sunday night scene, October 29th. Thank you, Lord. Well, I started.
devil knows we're tired of him. Amen. Amen. We ain't got time for him. And we got our foot on the rock. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So Amen. right now we're going to tell him I'm tired of you saying. Yes. <laughs> Now listen to me. Woo, yes. I tell you what I'm gonna do. You walked on me for too long now, and now I'm gonna walk on you.
right. What you do with the night is going to make the difference. Right. You can sit there and be quiet or either you can get involved. That's right. Brother well, Gilly's going to get involved, I believe that. Amen. He might be getting old, but he's still pretty good. Amen. <laughs> He's still going to find job. I'm not proud of it. Yes, sir. Praise God. And I appreciate you coming to meet him with us. Amen. Give him a hand. Praise Amen. God. It's all balanced out real good. That's we right. all get everything we need for our bodies, the plants, the animals, the nature. Everything is balanced out with the four seasons. God That's knows right. what to do with Yes, Amen. he does. Amen. He put it together. That's something. Just, just dipped his fingers in the bowl of his omnipotence and sprinkled the heavens and lit it up with the sun, the moon, the stars, and all That's the right. constellations. And then put put the sun in the middle of our universe and put the planets out and put earth far enough away where we could live on this planet and have water and the ground and deserts and mountains. My Lord just took his fingers and run it around the earth and make the valleys yes. and the mountains and, and spoke and there was salt water and then he spoke again and fresh water came forth and spilled into the ocean so we can have all that we need. Amen. Created all the vegetation and the insects and the birds and the fish and all these and then turned around and scooped up a handful of dirt and molded it into his likeness into his image and, and called man. Amen. took a rib out of man and made a woman so that be some companionship. <laughs> Praise God. God met every need that we ever have when he created everything. Right. Including and even made our bodies to work when it's healthy and working right. And that depends on us most of the time, don't it? How we treat it. Amen. And if we treat it right, it'll pretty well balance itself out and be healed and, and heal itself to the Amen. working power of the Lord. Amen. And it goes right on. But then there's other stuff that happens that we can't control and uh, diseases and afflictions and things of that nature. And that comes from what happened with Adam and Eve in the garden, don't it? Yeah. Called the curse of sin. Yeah. God had to put a curse on sin. And it's, it's all of this. So all of us are affected by it. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Amen. Son. Yes, Amen. So ever believeth in him Hallelujah. should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. And had the first Adam 
We, we died in sin in the second Adam, Jesus Christ. We are resurrected in newness of life and abundant life and eternal life. Amen. The Lord has put it together for us. Amen. God is so good. Let me share something with you here from the book of Acts chapter 1. And I'm going to title this message, The Three Matchless Promises of Christ. Three matchless, unique promises of Christ. Can't find it in any other religion. Can't find it in any other beliefs or organizations. Only in Jesus Christ, Christianity, three of the fundamental teachings and blessings that we have only comes from Jesus Christ. Three matchless promises of Christ. Acts chapter 1, beginning with verse 4. We're going to read through verse 11. And if uh, just, just watch it and see if you can pick up what the three promises are. Chapter 1, verse 4. Read it with me. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Read with me. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld him, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, as he went up, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, looking like angels, aren't they? Which also said, you men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Did you find them? We got three <coughs> matchless promises of Christ right here. This separates Christianity from all other religions. Of course, Jesus himself separates it from all other That's religions. Right. Because he is divine, son of God, second person of the Trinity, of the Godhead. But these are fund fundamental promises given to our Christian faith, and they're very essential. You won't find them anywhere. The other religions of the world have nothing like this. And you know, uh, what they call religious because they believe in a God or a philosophy. But there is no living God but the Lord God Jehovah and His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and His Spirit, the Holy Ghost. So the others don't have a living God. They're all dead. They're functioning and operating under the leadership of a dead God. So He don't have any leadership. He don't have any power. He don't have any wisdom. He don't have any way to help. I mean, they had to carve them out of wood and rock and stones and make them so, and write their own teachings and stuff because their God don't exist. So they're working by man's abilities. I don't want a God I have to carry around. I want a God to carry me around. Yeah. I found him. <laughs> I found him. Praise God. Tell your neighbor if you have. I found him. Amen. Amen. He'll help me. Let, me. let me share this with you. Now try not to hold you. Do like Liz Taylor told her seventh husband. I won't keep you long. <laughs> you know that joke's so old. I can't even. New generation don't even know who Liz Taylor is. <laughs> Praise God. That's all right. I don't need to know. Hey, the promise, the first promise is in verses 4 and 5. And it is the promise of his spirit. The promise of his spirit. Jesus is commanded them uh, not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. He said, which you've heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence from now. The Holy Ghost is the third person of the Trinity. We have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the three in one. Praise God. It's, it's a beautiful thing to see how God works. He's doing everything he can to help us, save us, have abundant life, and then get to heaven. That's what he wants. He's our, he's our father, we're his children. How many of us fathers, grandfathers, love to bless our children? 
love to help them. In, and don't they love to be blessed? <laughs> oh, especially with cash. But anyhow, they love, to be they love to be blessed. Amen. And we love to bless them. And I'm telling you, when we get together, like we've been singing here tonight, as they've been leading us in song and music and us a shouting and a clapping our hands and rejoicing in this Amen. Good, yes. Holy Ghost. And, uh, don't you know God sitting on his throne saying, that's my children down yeah. there. And that vibration comes from heaven down to us. That's and right. the Bible says that, that the Lord inhabits the praises yes, of yes. his people. Mm -hmm. So when we start lifting up praises to him, he slips right down here in the middle of us. And he starts loving on us, praise God. Amen. And he starts a blessing us. And he starts working in our midst. And when he starts blessing us, and we feel the spirit, and we get the strength and the joy and the peace, and the Holy Ghost works, and our flesh holds up, and those Holy Ghost chills up, we begin to shout that yes. much more as they thank you. Until we see some miracles like we saw last night. That's right. We got one we prayed for last night that's here tonight. That's right. Amen. That's a miracle Amen. right there. That's a miracle. For being to be here. And then what else is going on that God is doing? Some of you may know, then we may not know. It don't make a difference. We just know it's in God's hands and He'll take Amen. it. That's right. Praise God. I believe, I believe your body's healing up right now. He may use Praise doctors. God. He may use nursing. He may use medication. He may he use whatever he wants. We just want him to do something. Amen. Right. Amen. And he will. He will as we believe and pray and trust in him. Right. The first promise is the outpouring of God's spirit. Right. Jesus said you're going to receive the spirit. The spirit is important. You know, Jesus told his disciples, he told them, he said, the spirit is, is, uh, is with you, is it dwelling, is dwelling with you and shall be in you. So there's a distinction. He was referring in you to coming on the day of Pentecost. But right now he's with us. It is the spirit, God's spirit, God's presence, God's power, the Holy Ghost. That's what drew me to salvation. That's what drew us. We call it conviction. Uh -huh. The Spirit gets a hold of us when we hear the Word of God preached or taught or sung or see or hear something or somebody or their testimony. And God's Spirit gets us and see, there, there is a God. Yeah. See, there you know you're not living where you ought to be. That's and right. we think of God. We think of Jesus. We think of the Bible. We think of the church. We see a cross. We see a scripture. We immediately feel condemned and guilty because we know we're not living right. That's right. When we're in sin, that's what we do. We, that's why the world don't like us. Amen. That's why they're trying to get rid of scriptures and crosses and in God we trust and anything else that has to do with Christianity. They don't care about any other religions now. They're not trying to get rid of the Muslims. They're not trying to Islam. They're not trying to get rid of Hinduism or Buddhism or even the Native Indian culture. They're not trying to get rid of all that. It's just Christianity. Amen. And you know why? Because it's the only religion that's alive and well. Amen. Amen. It's the only religion that has a living God. And how do we know that? By the Spirit of God. Amen. The Spirit of God is the executor of the will of God. The Holy Ghost. Jesus said, I'm giving you the Spirit. The Spirit, I want you to have Him. He's with you, but He's going to be inside of you. Amen. And I want Him to be with you because the Spirit is going to put into your life what you need to not only get saved, but to stay saved. Amen. And then the Spirit's going to empower you. And the Spirit of God is going to, to remind you of whose you are. That's right. Whose you are. We belong to God. That's right. And the Spirit, Holy Spirit, reminds us we're serving a holy God. And we're following a holy Bible. That's right. Because we're headed to a holy heaven. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Oh, we're covered and regenerated by holy blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And this is what makes life worth living and makes death worth looking forward to. Amen. Because we shall rise, we shall rise. Hallelujah. And enter into his presence. So the Holy Ghost is the executor of the will of God. And what's that? Where's my sister at that got healed last night? She's back there, isn't she? Amen. And had the shingles in her, in her eye. And she said last night, she said she told her, was it her daughter she told? Yeah. Yeah. 
She said, she told her daughter, she said, last night about the middle of church time, she said, I started feeling better. Something, something happened to me and I started. Amen. We know what happened. That's right. We know what's going on. We were sitting in prayers up Yes. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus Thank you, Lord. Great. said, Father, she needs healing. She got a lot of pain and she's been through a lot. She needs healing. And she's one of our people. She's That's one right. of our children. She's one of the sheep of my pasture. And I'm her good shepherd. Lord, Father, I paid the price for her healing. You see the stripes on my back? That was for the healing of her body. Yes. And I stand her here in her behalf as her advocate and lawyer and attorney to you, her creator and judge, heal her. Yes. And the Father looked at the price Jesus paid. He looked at the problem that needed to be healed. He saw her name in the book of life. Yes. He knew the covenant promises. He turned around and said, okay, Holy Ghost. Go apply the healing blood. Yes. Yes, he did. Apply yes. healing virtue to this yes. precious temple of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And healing virtue All to the right. <laughs> Yes. Oh, hey, he will do that. He will do that. And he did strength. How is the pastor continuing to go with what he's dealing with in this heat and hot weather and, and what he's dealing with? It is the healing virtue of Jesus that right. the Holy Ghost keeps applying and putting Thank into you, your life. You know, and you know, and how, have, how have any of us made it through the problems of life? He gives us a strength when we were weak and worn out and we couldn't, we couldn't make it any further. When you've done all you know to do. My God, we've anointed some people and prayed for some people and prayed and anointed enough prayer clause that can make a quilt out of it. Uh -huh. Which is good because then you can cover your whole body with it. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I'd like to have a quilt of prayer clause. Amen. And throw it on some people when they came into church. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let the Amen. power flow and the Spirit of God work. The Holy Ghost applies the promises of God. Amen. He applied. He's the one that saved us. Amen. When I repented of my sin at the age of 15 at the East Burlington Church of God and gave my heart to the Lord, the Father said, uh, Jesus said, Father, that's, that's one we've been after. The Spirit's been after him. His mom's been praying for him. She got to church praying for him. She finally got him in church. He's under conviction, and, and he needs to be saved, and the conviction is on him, and now he's, he's come to the altar. He's come to the altar. Now, Father, look at the scars in my hands, my feet, and my side, and around my forehead. Look at the scars on my body, scars of a sacrificial lamb, Amen. and I paid the price for the forgiveness of his sins. Oh, and the Father saw the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. And he saw and listened to my faith and sincerity, and he said, Holy Ghost, you go down, and you take Bobby Gilly's soul, and you dip it by immersion in the blood of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Seated at the right hand of the Father, ever make an intercession in behalf of us. Right. So he, he made it possible. He paid the price. And then when we believe and pray and repent and submit and surrender and cry out, and then you hear all those intercessory prayers going up for us and us for others, the Holy Ghost is told by the Father to go 
and apply the promise. Yes. Meet that financial Beautiful. need. Heal that marriage problem. Bless that person's health. Minister there and open up a job. Do this. Speak peace to that troubled mind. Calm that person's nerves. Yes. Back off the forces of hell Amen. that have come against them. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord comes in yes. and raises up a standard against them. Amen. Somebody said, when the enemy comes in like a flood, King James says, comma, when the enemy comes in like a flood, comma, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard, a banner, victory over it. That's right. Amen. Somebody said, that comma's in the wrong place. Said instead of being when the spirit of the Lord, when the enemy comes in like a flood, comma, it is when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord. Let me see how it goes. When the, when the enemy comes in, comma, like a flood, the spirit of the Lord comes yeah. in. Yeah. Amen. I said either way you want to put the comma, the Holy Ghost comes in. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And comma, Right. And a comma won't make any difference because he is the Lord. Amen. One fellow said it this way. God's plan, Jesus paid for it, and the Holy Ghost applies it. And he said it this way. God thought it, Jesus bought it, the Holy Ghost wrought it, the Bible taught it, the devil fought it, but I got it! Woo! the Lord gave. Did you know no other religion has this? No, the Holy Ghost in our midst lets us know God is real. That's right. We feel Him. We experience Him. We feel Him. That's right. And you can see it sometimes by the way people respond when He moves in the midst. That's right. Absolutely. No other religion has that. Number one, because their God's not real. That's right. So whatever they believe, they don't know because there's nothing that tells them for sure. They have no feeling. They have no guarantee. They have no executor. They have nothing. All they're doing is hoping and wishing that whatever they're thinking is going to come to pass. Amen. God don't work that way. Nope. He says, I not only give it to you, I sent my son to take care of it, and I'm sending my spirit to draw you, and yes. I'm sending my angels to shake you up, and I'm sending my Bible to give you a hard copy, and I'm sending Holy Ghost to know me, yes. so you'll have a GPS, amen. 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 Yes. To us all the way. Yes, the Holy does. Ghost here makes Christianity a reality. A re we experience God. No other religion does that because their God's not real. We experience the presence and person of God yes. in our hearts, in our minds. How many of you know you were in the middle of a valley of decision, you didn't know which way to go, and all of a sudden God came in and showed you exactly That's what right. to do. Amen. Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking Amen. about? Amen. 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 I'm telling you, he'll lead you. Steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Praise God. It works, I'm telling you. The scriptures tell us that our God is real. Yes, but is. our experience with God tells us it's real. Joel 2 in chapter 2. 700 years before Acts chapter 2, the Spirit came on the prophet Joel. And the Lord said, In the last days I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men dream dreams. Old men have vision. Praise God. And upon all the flesh, whosoever calls upon my name shall be saved. Glory to God. He put it together for us. John chapter 7, verses 38 and 39. Jesus said, He that believes on me as the Scripture says. He that believes on me as the Scripture. You can't just believe Jesus is real. That's the end of it. Believe what He teaches. Amen. That we must repent of our sins and ask forgiveness and repent and, and follow Him. So He said, He that believes on me as the Scripture is said, Out of His belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Water symbolic of the Holy Ghost. John 14, verses 16 following. Jesus said, I will pray the Father, and he will send you another comforter. Did you notice that? I'm going to go back. Jesus said, it is profitable for you disciples that I go back to heaven. Because if I don't go back to heaven, the Holy Ghost won't come next to but he said, if I go back to the Father, I'll pray to the Father that he send you 
another comforter. Comforter means counselor. Psychiatrist. We need one. Amen. 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 But Jesus knew I'd be here because he created me. And I'm so crazy, I need two. <laughs> That's why that word another is in there. Jesus said, I'm your comforter, but I'm going back to heaven. I'm going to be your great high priest and intercessor at the right hand of the Father. Right. And I'm going to be interceding for you at the end. So you've got one comforter in heaven. But I'm not going to leave you in this world with a mean devil and some fallen angels and demonic forces of by yourself. I'm going to send you another comforter. Yes. Yeah. Woo! Oh, I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Got the Father, got the Son, got the Holy Ghost. Amen. So here he is, the executor of the will of God, applying the promises and the wonder-working power of God. That's right. What an awesome God. Is. Gives us Amen. energy and strength when we never thought we'd have it. Helps us do things we never thought we'd go through. I look back, Greg, Lord, I can't even go there. I've got to finish this message. But anyhow, there's a whole lot of stuff I can talk about. But I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, is the breath of God. Amen. Spirit of God. The church is referred to with a metaphor, body of Christ. Paul did it. He used it in Romans, he used it in 1 Corinthians, he used it in Ephesians, and he used it in Colossians. The church is like the body of Christ, is, is as a body. Christ is the head of the body, and we are the members of the body. Believers, hands, feet, fingers, we are the body of Christ. Christ is the head and has the wisdom and direction and leadership. And, and, and we are the members of the body that he can move, move through to accomplish the spread of the gospel to help get people saved, sanctified, spirit filled, victory, freedom, deliverance, and sing songs like we're doing tonight. Tell the devil to get out of our face. We Amen. belong to God. We're going to be free. And we are free. And we're going to stand for God. Amen. And we can go forward. And so he does that. So the church is the body of Christ. But the Holy Ghost is the breath of life. Yes. The Holy Ghost is the breath. That's what's happened to too many churches. They kick the Holy Ghost out. Amen. Or they won't let him come in. Yes. And there is no breath. So it's simply a beating of people. It's an organization. God's church, the body of Christ with the Holy Ghost, is an organism. It's a living being. Yes. We are God's people. Amen. And he lives and works through us and functions Amen. through us. So, so we see the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is what makes church worthwhile. The Spirit of God is, is what keeps things going. As we pray and seek God and live for him and fast, he will pour out his Spirit. Amen. And he does that. Amen. Churches that have backed off of that have sort of phased out. Sunday school, Sunday night, revival services, and all kinds of stuff. Backing off of things, resulting in uh, community. We need more than just helping people in the community. Right. We need regeneration in people's lives. Right. People need to be born again. People don't know who they are. People don't know what gender they are. Jesus. I struggle with that. I'm telling you how people can be that ignorant. I mean, God created us where we can know what we are. Right. Right. Somebody said, well, I don't like the way I was born. I said, well, be born again. Amen. 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 Yes. That's a good answer. Don't like the way they born. Be born again. Amen. God can fix it. Amen. Amen. God can fix it to where they be who God called them to be. Amen. Three natural promises of God. Number one, the promise of the Spirit. Second one, the promise of His power. Yes. The promise of supernatural power. Not human power, not intellectual power, not philosophical power, not money power, not people power, not military power. We're talking about supernatural power that comes from a holy God and he called the Holy Ghost. Right. Acts 1 and 8, and ye shall receive power yeah. after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. Now, some of those that don't believe that the Holy Ghost baptism is separate from salvation, I don't know what they're going to do with that verse. <laughs> no kidding. 
Because the power don't come until after the Holy Ghost comes in. That's right. But uh, there's a lot more verses to support that too. But nevertheless, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Ephesians 3.16. He prayed that they may be strengthened with might by the power of the Spirit. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but He has given us the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And we need all three. Yes. Time to get back up here. <laughs> Amen. If God sees something we don't need, and He takes it out of us, That's right. He gives you triple blessings to place it, replace it. That's right. Triple blessings to replace it. You don't want, none of us want fear. Fear of judgment, fear of hell, fear of this thing, you know. Some things are natural fear. That's not what he's talking about. If I see a rattlesnake coming at me, I'm going to run. Amen. Amen. I'm afraid of snakes. I don't want nothing to do with any of them. Amen. I don't care what color they are or how big or small they are. I don't want nothing to do with them. I think it's got something to do with my understanding of the Garden of Eden. <laughs> Anyhow, nevertheless, uh, so that's natural fear. You see an 18 wheeler crossing the line coming at you. You're going to be afraid. That's You're right. Going to take some That's not what he's saying. He's talking about fear of eternal damnation. Right. Fear of, of what could cave in and destroy your mind and your soul and your mm -hmm. body and your life. This is what he's talking about. And so he's, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. Take fear out, throw it away. But God said, I'm going to replace the one thing I took out with three powerful blessings. That's right. Power of the Holy Ghost, love of God, Supernatural love, mm -hmm. love of God, and a sound mind. Mm -hmm. And we've got to have all three. Yeah. If you have power and don't have love and a sound mind, if you have sound mind and don't have love and a power, you know, if you have love but don't have power and a sound mind, I mean, you can take one out of each one, each way of switching around. He said, I'm going to give you all three. You're going to be well covered. You're going to have everything you need. <laughs> God has put it together for this body, soul, and spirit. He's put it together to have power, love, and a sound mind. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Love from the heart, sound mind in the brain, supernatural power. Yeah. Yeah. The soul, yeah. Praise God, Holy Ghost. He's put it together for us. Right. That's because we have a Father, Son, and Holy Ghost working in our behalf. Amen. To help us, to bless us. So we see this power. So God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So we have all these blessings that come our way. We have that. And I've had people say, how do how, how, I don't understand. How, where is it in the scriptures that, they, that, they, that this is an ongoing thing? I said, well, you look at Acts chapter 2, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. but, but they were filled with the Holy Ghost, spoke in tongues, and the Spirit gave to us. Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 19, Romans chapter 8, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. You can look at all them, and every one of them talks about the operation of the Holy Ghost, working in full power, strength, with either fruit or gifts of the Spirit, or energizing us supernaturally with power to keep going, spiritual power, spiritual. As a matter of fact, Genesis opens with creation and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. Mm -hmm. He brought order out of chaos. Amen. Amen. And that's Genesis. Somebody say Genesis. Genesis 1. Somebody say Genesis 1. Genesis 1. Where's that? How about Revelation 22? Revelation. And the Spirit and the bride, which is the church, say, Come. Let him that hear him come. Let him that is in thirst come. Let whosoever will come and drink of the water of life freely. Right. I'm telling you from Genesis to Revelation, from generations to revolutions, the Holy Ghost is at work everywhere. Amen. Amen. And he's still working right now. So I don't even know whosoever will allow him to flow right. to, to give you strength, energy, and power. Yeah. I have preached this. I heard it preached for years, and I preached it. And I changed a little bit on this concept. It said, Holy Ghost power. The word for power is the Greek word. It's translated power. Is the word dyna, dunamis, which we get the word dynamite. And I've heard it preached, the Holy Ghost is power like dynamite. <laughs> and I preached that a while. You know, so that sounds like what it is. And that is the Greek word. But the more I thought about it, I say, hey, you blow up dynamite, it's over with. Yeah. 
We need something more than just a stick of dynamite to fight the devil spiritually. Amen. And I got to take him, what we need is a dynamo. Which is the same Amen. Greek word we get the word dynamo. And the dynamo keeps on keeping on, yes. keeps on keeping on, Amen. keeps on keeping on, keeps on keeping on, keeps on keeping on, keeps on. That's how we got through those battles. That's how we got through those family quarrels. That's how we got through those financial struggles. That's how we got through those dark, miserable nights we had to struggle. That's how we got our nerves back to normal. That's how we're still here tonight. on flowing. Amen. Keeps on flowing. Keeps on flowing. Keeps on flowing. You know, and it's up to you how much you want them to flow. That's right. Amen. The more you get close to God, some people don't seek the Holy Ghost. And if you just worship God, say, I want all you got. Pour into me everything you got. Just seek the Lord with all your heart. Say, I want everything you got, Lord. I love Amen. you. Pour your spirit into my life. Amen. And you just get lost in what don't go seeking tongues. Seek God. Amen. And all he has for you, and I've, I've not seen anybody yet to where the Spirit didn't come into them but while they were worshiping, praising God. I know some got the Holy Ghost while they were saying the blessing over their meal on Sunday at lunch. So I went to the door after seeking the Holy Ghost. Got tired. So went to the door and went to push on the door to leave the church, but they were praising God. Went to push the door and the Holy Ghost pushed back on them. They started speaking in tongues. I mean, it's a, the Holy Ghost. But tongues is just the evidence. My Lord, that's just the initial evidence. My initials are BLG. Bulge. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like a bulge. But anyhow, bulge. Bulge. That's my initials. That's not me. This is me. Amen. <laughs> this is me. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Initials just represent the tongues, or there's evidence to let you know He's inside of you. You got the real thing. Hallelujah. You got the real power. You got the real anointing. You got the supernatural presence of God, yeah. and He's flowing in you. Praise God. And it's and it, then it's up to you how much you want God to keep that flowing in you. Amen. There's power there. Some people got enough power for a tricycle. <laughs> then some people got a little more power for a bicycle. Then some people got enough power for a moped. Okay. <laughs> then some people got power. I don't know what else to say here. Four cylinder. <laughs> then you got some with the eight cylinders. Let's get some big power in here. <laughs> Praise God. I'm telling you, I got a Lincoln. It's 2005. That's as high as I can get. It's 2005, but that's good. <laughs> Amen. And it's got a speedometer on that thing. It says 120. And I know I can't do that. The government says no. So I can't do that. But old Ledford here, I want to get it to go. And, I, and I've been having fun the last two nights. On the interstate, going around Charlotte, glory to God, I can lay it down to 80 plus. Amen. Whoever's around me. We're going at it. But anyhow, how much power do you want? Amen. You got it. It's available. Some people get saved and satisfied and let the devil use them like a mop and sling them everywhere. Amen. Walk all over them, just take over them, and they sing in gloom, despair, and agony on me. Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. Didn't know I could save it. If it weren't for bad luck, no we not have any luck. luck at all. This class, something that's all they said because they've never done what y'all been singing about tonight. Right. Say, really, who, whose you are? I'm washed in the blood, Amen. sanctified, Amen. full of the Spirit. My name's in the book of life. I got a heavenly Father, I got an interceding Savior, I got a Holy Ghost of Amen. Honor. Amen. I got an angel of the Lord encamped about me. I'm protected by the blood and the yes. host of heaven. Oh. I'm a child of the oh. King. Oh. I'm Working pretty good for me right now. <laughs> Praise God. 
So we have this. Luke chapter 9. I love this. Luke 9. Verse 1. Jesus said to the apostles, I give unto you power and authority. Mm -hmm. And authority. Power's no good if you don't have authority to use it. Jesus said, I give you authority to use this power. Over all devils. I give it to you power and authority over all devils. Luke 9 and 1. Can you imagine? We have that much power Amen. to rebuke the devil out of our face. Rebuke him off our nerves. Rebuke him away from our marriages. Rebuke him away from our children and grandchildren. Rebuke him out of our finances. We have power and authority over all devils. That's right. And then he tells us to go preach the gospel and heal the sick. Cure the disease. What other scripture Jesus said? Go and preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the leper. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely you have received, so freely give. That's you right. got the power if you use it. Amen. Come on, give him a praise right there. Amen. Amen. Put your foot down and say, no more devil. That's right. Like they were singing a while ago. You put your foot down and you make sure that you know whose you are. Amen. So we have the promise of his spirit. We have the promise of his power. No other religion has that. No other religion has that supernatural power. And the third final prom uh, promise, Witness. he gave us the promise of his return. As you see him go, this same Jesus is coming back in like manner out of heaven. And so he tells us that. John 14 and 1. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. Did you hear that? Amen. I go to prepare a place for you. you got a house. It's either on Hallelujah Boulevard or Glory Avenue. <laughs> and it's what you always dreamed of, except it's far better and greater than that. Amen. But he said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, that's what got me. I don't care about the house, and I don't care about all the other stuff. Mm -mm, I don't right. care about rewards. I don't care about honest to God, I don't. When you get to my age and you get to looking at everything, you say, Lord, I just want to step inside the pearly gates. Amen. I just want to make it to heaven. Praise God, I want to be where Jesus is. That's right. Praise God. That's and he right. said, and he said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there ye may be also. That's right. And if I'm going to prepare a place for you, if I'm going to go to all that trouble, I'll come back and get you. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. I said, North Carolina Dialogue. Praise God. I'll come back and get you. Amen. I'm Praise coming back God. for you. Yeah. Then he said, Where I go, you know. You know. And the way you know. You know. Oh, really God. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. He left us a road map. Yes, he did. The Bible. A hard copy. <laughs> yep. All right? Amen. But not only did he do that, he left us a GPS. Yes. yes. Out of the throne room in heaven, the satellite in heaven, the throne room in heaven, beams the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. To put with this hard copy. And together... Covered in the blood, sanctified, spirit-filled. Amen. Father looking after us. Savior interceding for us. Holy Amen. Ghost energizing us. Angel of the Lord and kept about us. And the rest of the saints of God. You can make it to heaven. Look at three different people say no excuse. No excuse. No excuse. Y'all didn't do it to three. You got to do it again. And no excuse. Romans 8 and 11. But the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Then he that raised up Jesus from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by that same spirit. Amen. Amen. Good God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. But we know it's like we hope, wish, and want. We know, K-N-O-W, we know that if this earthly tabernacle, tent, temporary residence, if this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, we have 
a building, not a tent or a tabernacle. Uh -huh. We've got a building, a structure with a permanent foundation that yes. shall not be moved. We have a building, not made with hands. It's a building, it's not made with hands, it's eternal and it's in the heavens. Hallelujah. Yes. Woo! How do you know all that, Brother Gilly? Had it read the Bible says so, but listen to this. Go on down to verse, I believe it's verse 5. For he has given us the earnest of his spirit. Mm -hmm. Earnest means down payment. Remember the down payments we'd have to put down for a car, a house, yeah. or what we used to. I don't think I can do any of that anymore. But anyhow, you got to put down so much money. That tells the banks, we know the rest of it that we're loaning is coming back to us with interest. Yes. They know it's coming. Put down enough to where we are guaranteed you're coming. You're going to bring us the rest. Jesus said, I'm not just going to leave you by yourself. I'm giving you the down payment of the resurrection. Hallelujah. The down payment of the resurrection. The down payment that the Spirit of God that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. That he that raised up Jesus shall also quicken your mortal body. Well, that's right. This is the down payment. How many of you felt the Holy Ghost in this service today? Amen. 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 I mean, you know that you know that you know that's God. That's his right. Spirit. That's our down payment. You know what? That? God said, hey, I just want you to be remind, I want you to remind, remind you, I haven't forgotten what I promised you. I'm That's right. Again. I'm coming again. I'm coming Amen. to get you. I'm coming yes, to get you. Is. I'm going to raise you up. Amen. I'm going to raise you up. And so, and so we have that, that earnest of the Spirit is the down payment. And that lets me know he's coming again. That's right. These singers get to singing. Preacher and pastor used to preaching. Some of them get to testifying. Some of all of us get to praying. And all of a sudden, the gush of the Holy Ghost comes through. And the Spirit of God moves. And we're like we've been enjoying here. And, and, and that you continue to enjoy. I know under this pastor's ministry, the Spirit working. That's God saying, I'm pleased with you. That's God saying, I'm in your midst. Amen. But that's God saying, don't forget, I'm coming for you. Don't forget, I'm coming for you. Don't forget, I'm coming for you. That's right. And he's done that. He's going to do that. He's going to do that. He's coming. And I believe he's coming any second, like I said last night. Second Corinthians, uh, well, I already said it. Second Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. But he's long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. Amen. But the day of the Lord will come. Yes. Woo. Amen. Bring the rest of it in. Come on. Now. But the day of the Lord will come. come. Don't count his patience and long suffering as null and void of his return. Right. That's not a stopping of it. It's God's mercy giving more people time to get in. Amen. God's Amen. mercy giving people more time to get in. Paul said in that resurrection chapter in 1 Corinthians 15, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all live, or we shall not all die, but we shall all live. We shall rise. We shall rise. This corruptible is going to put on incorruption. Right. This mortal is going to put on immortality. This natural <laughs> is going to put on a spiritual. And we shall rise. We shall rise. Oh, Glory to God. He is going to change us in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. Right. We yeah. shall be changed. How shall we be changed? First John, I believe, is chapter, I believe it's chapter 2, verse 1. That he says, Beloved, now we are the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know this. When he shall appear. When? Not if. When? Not if. When? Not if. When? Not if. When? When he shall appear. We shall be like Thessalonians, where Christ shall come, glory to God, when the trumpet shall sound, the dead in Christ shall rise, glory to God, Christ comes in the clouds of glory, the trumpet shall sound, with the voice of an archangel, the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, right. we, that makes sense, because they're, they're not in the grave, their bodies are. The ashes are dust wherever they may be. That's right. Their souls in heaven. Amen. As soon as your last breath comes out of your body, yeah. Jesus takes that soul straight up. That's right. Stand before God. Either go before the Lord to enter to heaven 
So you go before the Lord and he'll send you to a devil's table. That's all right. Amen. Mm -hmm. But if you say he'll take you to heaven. That's what he wants. He wants to take us to heaven. So we want to stay safe. And so we go there. So when the trumpet sounds at the rapture, that's when the Father will send the Holy Ghost to take the souls of the saints that have already died and in heaven, bring them back to earth to wherever their graves or their scattered ashes are. Bring them together in a moment at the twinkling of an eye. Up from the grave they will appear. Then we who are alive and remain shall hook up with them. And we'll all rise in heaven. Yes. And Jesus in the sky. <laughs> That's the rapture the resurrection is going to occur. And we'll have a great time up there while all hell is breaking loose on earth. Amen. They think God's wrath or anger. No, you haven't seen God. God. You've seen a little bit of God's anger. You ain't seen God's wrath until you read the book of Revelation. That's right. Amen. God sends his anger. It'll spur on some things to get us to change. I got to look at this. I'm going to share this with you. Now. And I'm almost through. Almost. Almost. <laughs> almost. Luke 17, 24. Think of this. For as the lightning that lightnings out of one part of the heaven and shines to the other part of the heaven. How many of you know who seen that? How fast it happens. As the, and that's what he's saying. Luke 17, 24. For as the lightning that lightnings out of one part under the heaven shines into the other part under the heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. Amen. That's how fast the twinkling of an eye is going to occur. As the lightning flashes. Now I got to look at this. Look at your neighbor and say, be prepared for the flash. I'm talking Holy Ghost flash. Amen. You know, lightning only comes when there's a storm brewing. Does anybody believe there's a storm brewing in our nation? And in this world, it's the worst storm that's ever been in the history since World War II. It is a horrible storm. There's a storm going and lightning's about to strike. Lightning's about to strike. How fast is lightning? From the sky to the ground and back up again is one ten thousandth of a second. One ten thousandth of a second. For lightning to go from the sky to the ground and back up again. One ten thousandth of a second. And Christ is going to come as a flash of lightning. How powerful is that? One ten thousandth of a second. The air is instantly heated to 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit. 1,400 degrees. That's why there's fires. Trees split down the middle. And all kinds of chaos when lightning strikes it. Raw energy released in one flash of lightning is enough to raise your car 50 miles straight up in the air. Wow. Your car, 50 miles, my car, 50 miles straight up. That's how much power streak of lightning. And they wonder how we're going to be changed. Do it. How we're going to be changed. We're going to be changed in a moment of the twinkling of an eye. We shall be changed. Glory to God and to the likeness of the Son of God. The Lord is coming. Yes, the Lord is coming. Amen. He's given us three matchless promises you can't get anywhere else except through Jesus Christ. And it's the heart of the Christian gospel. Amen. He has promised His Spirit who will draw us, show us, open our minds to see the love of the mm -hmm. Father, the grace of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost. And show us how sinful and far apart we are from God, mm -hmm. but also how Jesus paid the price to wash us and cleanse us and make a new creature out of us mm -hmm. and adopt us into the family of God and then give us an abundant life and then an eternal life. Right. He's put it all together for us. Isn't he wonderful? Amen. Amen. Wonderful, loving, and merciful. Yes, God. Yes. I'll say this, and I promise I'll be through. <laughs> well, we, we'll be ready for all to call in heaven. <laughs> I had a dream. And I dreamed. It was right after one of our good saints died. Good saint of God died and went to heaven, I know, because it's a good, good saint of God. And it was just a few nights after that, I had a dream. And, and, and I, I was sitting in the back of the church, in the old parking lot in the back of the church, for whatever reason, I do not know. But nevertheless, that's where I remember. I was sitting in a chair, and around the corner comes his sister. And, and I, I can't say that this dream is of God, but that, yet it... I believe it is for me. And the reason I'm saying that, she comes walking around the back and she's looking on the ground and looking. And I looked at her and I said, Sister, what are you doing here? 
because I remember we just had a funeral. And she said, I forgot my glasses. <laughs> That's why I know I don't know if it's for God. Uh, I'll tell you. You'll <laughs> <laughs> be classes in heaven. That day, right? Amen. But anyhow, God was trying to tell me something out of it. <laughs> anyhow, so I said, I jumped up with her. I said, I'm going back with you. I'm going back with you. And she turned around and looked at me, and all of a sudden, both of us left the ground. Wow. And I can remember, oh God, I can remember. I feel it right now. I can remember going straight up and I looked up, we went through the skies and we went up into outer space. And I remember just, just flying through. I used to watch Superman, you know. And I, and, but I don't, I don't remember my hands being out. I just remember just going, we were flying straight. It was just unreal. She was over here, I know she was still with me, and I was over, and we were flying straight up through the heavens and the stars, I remember that. And I saw three bright stars in front of me. And, and as we kept going, and we were going so fast, flying through the air, I literally could feel my hair flying in the wind, the wind <laughs> flying in my hair. That, that, that was how real it was. And as we're flying, to, and the closer we got to those three, they kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I saw the two on each side, and I knew they were angels. I said, that's got to be my Lord in the middle. <laughs> and about the time I got to where I could almost, I couldn't see his face. But I could see the body, but I couldn't see his face, and immediately I woke up. Wow. Uh, it was this, I felt that way. I was disappointed. No, yeah. I, was, I said, I, I, I laid there and thought, it's a, I forgot to tell you this. We were flying through the air. As we were flying through the air, she would only say, we were flying through there, and I saw those three, and I could tell there were two angels, and it had to be Jesus in the middle. And we went, I said, I knew it was real. I knew it was real. I knew it was real. Amen. Oh, I'm telling you, these three matchless promises tells us anything and everything we need to live for God, a good, holy, rapture-ready life, full of God's blessings and favor, is available. And we can have it. And we can live it. And we can enjoy it. And then we get a promotion. That's right. Christians never die. We just get promoted. We step out of abundant life into eternal life. Because we serve Him who is the resurrection. Of That's right. Oh, what a Savior. Got everything to live for, everything to die for. That's Amen. right. Amen. When you know that you know that you know your sins are under the blood, your name's in the book, God's presence is with you. You can do it. That's right. Praise God. Oh, I feel His presence. So Hallelujah. I don't know how we can do this, but I feel led to do this. Could it, could as many of you as will, could all of you come and stand? Maybe some of you could stand up here a little bit. I'm, I'm going to do an altar call with all of us praying together. But I want to lead you in this prayer. Would you come if you can? I know some may not be able to. But all of you will come up. This altar area is a, is a sacred area. An altar is a sacred area. The place of prayer is a sacred area. Praise God. Come on, come on up. This gather right here. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. I just feel God leading you this way tonight. And those of you that are not, not able to get up here, you can pray with us, praise God. But I want you to do this. I want you to do it. How many of you know right now, without a doubt, without a doubt, right now, you know this Bible is real. Could you stick your hand up? Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. How many of you know God made it possible for you to get to heaven? Amen. 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 How many of you know He's already in your heart? And Amen. 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 Oh, great God. Amen. I want you to pray this prayer after me. So I want you to close your eyes. 
and just think about God on the throne and Jesus sitting beside of him on his right. And there are cherubims and seraphims crying, holy, 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 all around him. And we're going to pray to him right now. But I want you to pray this prayer right now. Hallelujah. And if you will, just repeat it after me. But it won't mean a thing unless it comes from your heart. So, and I promise I won't lead you astray. But I want you to pray this prayer. Dear Lord, Dear Lord cover, me cover me in the blood of your Son. In the blood of your son. Wash my soul, Wash my soul in, the blood of in the blood of Jesus. Save me. Save me. Sanctify me. Sanctify me. Baptize me. Baptize in your spirit. In your spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You Hallelujah. gave your life for me. You gave your life for me. I give my life to you. I give my life to you. Take it. Take it. Mold it. Mold it. Make it. What you want it to be. In the name of Jesus. I give my life to you. Thank you, Jesus. For saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus. To taking care of me and my family. Thank you, Jesus. For the best that is yet to come. Hallelujah. somebody else. Are you ready? Amen. All right. Again, close your eyes. Get ready now. Say, devil. Devil. Oh, now listen. Some of you shout at your children stronger now. Now we're talking about that thing trying to kill you and destroy you. Devil. Devil. You are a defeated foe. You are a defeated foe. I am covered in the blood. I am covered in the blood.
yes. miracle. A miracle. Of course, we, uh, you know, the greatest miracle there is is the same soul. Amen. Amen. You can't get any greater miracle than being born again. But if you need a miracle in your life, there may be somebody in your life you've been praying for in your house is not saved yet. That may be something. Bring something. Bring something. You got prayer claws. We use prayer claws. Bring a sock. One of your children. We'll anoint it. Bring you, bring a envelope, case, whatever. Yeah, bring your envelope, your mortgage book, whatever. If it's financial, bring bring something that we can anoint with oil, or, or we'll use the prayer clause we have on. And we're gonna and we're gonna pray for God to divinely intervene into a supernatural miracle. Yes. Miracles are happening, and we're seeing that they are happening. Yes. And I want you to come and with and bring something that you need a miracle for. Amen. And of course, the biggest thing we get somebody saved. Amen. Yes. Amen. Be much in prayer for tomorrow night. Come back and be with us. Let Brother Bob be know you enjoyed it. Shake your hands. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.